Welcome back friends to the course of operating system. In this session, I am going to talk about schedulers, dispatchers and one of the very important topic in operating system that is context switching. So let's talk about the schedulers first. What is a scheduler? Schedulers are the decision making algorithms which moves a process from one state to another. In earlier sessions, we talked about different states in which process can uh, reside. So scheduler is the decision making algorithm which decides which process will reside in which state of state transition diagram. There are three types of schedulers in the operating system. First one is called as long term scheduler. The meaning of the long term scheduler is this particular scheduler is responsible for loading new processes that are created by the user into ready state. So this transition from new state to ready state, it, the transition is decided by the long term scheduler. If long term scheduler denies this transition, we say that the process creation has failed. The second scheduler is short term scheduler, which is also called as CPU scheduler. Why it is called as CPU scheduler is out of n processes which are in the ready state, one of the process is selected by this CPU scheduling uh, CPU scheduler and it is assigned the CPU for execution. So the decision making is done by the CPU scheduler. Decision means there are some uh, CPU scheduling algorithms which we are going to eventually learn. These algorithms decide which one of these n processes will be should be selected to run in the CPU. And the third scheduler is called as medium term scheduler, which is also called as swapper. We already learned that there is an extended state for the ready state, which is called as a suspended ready. And the property of this suspended ready state, the processes are in the secondary disk. The processes in the ready state are in the primary memory. But if the memory gets full, OS shifts some of the processes to the secondary disk. We call those processes are in the suspended ready state. Now this decision is made by the medium term scheduler, which is also called as swapper. So the operations suspend and resume are performed by the swapper. So out of these three schedulers, which scheduler controls the degree of multi-programming? Now we learned about the multi-programming also. Multi degree of multi-programming means at one time, how many processes can be in memory. Now if you observe carefully, long term scheduler is the one which decides the transition from new to ready and that's how the long term scheduler decides the degree of multi-programming that means how many processes will be in the entire system is purely decided by the long term scheduler. Let's talk about the dispatcher now. Dispatcher is responsible for performing context switching. Now what is the meaning of context switching? Context switching is an activity in the operating system which performs the switching of processes in the CPU. So these are my two states of state transition diagram which is ready state and the running state. Let's assume that there are two processes in the ready queue waiting to get chance in CPU. Whereas process P1 is currently holding the CPU and it is executing its instructions. Now let's perform the context switching. With the context switching, if any other process wants to execute in the CPU, first we have to unload the process from CPU. Here process P1 needs to uh, be again sent back to the ready state. And one of the process in the ready queue will again be scheduled to the CPU. So here I am scheduling the process P2 to the CPU. And with this change in the states of two processes, the context switching has completed. 
at this moment process p2 is running and p3 and p uh, and p1 are waiting in the ready state so context switching involves saving of the pcb that is process control block of preempted process and loading of the pcb of next process that you are going to schedule to the cpu let me demonstrate this with the help of a c example let's take this program 1 i have written some c program uh, a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 and one operation this is the corresponding assembly instructions for this c program similarly let me take another program which has two variables and i am do doing the multiplication operation here and these are the corresponding assembly instructions for this process p2 let's assume that the both the processes are created by the operating system and are loaded in the ready state all right so here are my two processes p1 and p2 and these are the let's assume after loading of this process in memory but uh, to be precise when i when the operating system will load these instructions in the code section every instruction will be assigned an address so here 35 36 37 up to 40 are the addresses of these instructions whereas let's assume that 90 91 etc are the addresses of the this Uh, instructions of p2 now when the process is created a pro process control block is created for every process so here also two process control blocks are created so let's again discuss here how this process control blocks are used to perform this context switching how they are useful in this activity of switching the two processes in cpu let's assume that both the processes are interested to uh, uh, to execute their instructions in cpu now so let me take the cpu here inside cpu i have the program counter variable and there are several registers just for demonstration i have shown the two registers r1 and r2 let's assume that as of now there is nobody no process running in the cpu and os decides p1 will first run in the cpu so the state of the process 1 will be changed from ready to running here whereas the state of the process 2 is ready so pcv is the place at which the state of the process is maintained now as i said OS is going to run this process one. I have to assign the program counter's value to the instruction address starting with the thirty-five. Let's say so. The program counter is is initialized to thirty-five here, and let's start the execution of process P one now. Now, as CPU executes, uh, it uh, performs the execution cycle. That is, fetch, increment the program counter, decode, and execute. so let's do that one by one so as of now 35 at instruction at address 35 fetched it is executed and program counter is incremented to 36 here again it performs the operation it stores the value 20 at the address of b and it increments the program counter one more time and it again fetches the next instruction the third instruction says that store the value of address of a now we have already stored 10 at the address of a so 10 will be loaded into the register r1 so here is the value 10 which is loaded in the register r1 similarly the next instruction says that load the value of b into the register r2 after this execution of four instructions let's perform the context switching now 
Now let's prehend the process P1 from CPU and OS wants to allocate the CPU to the process P2 now. That is let's perform the context switching now. Now before I hand over the, this CPU to process P2, I need to make sure that when, I, when this CPU will be allocated again to the process 1, it should execute in a expected manner. Meaning is that the next instruction going to be executed after process P1 will be loaded again is instruction number 39. And instruction number 39 assumes that register values would be R1 and R2 that is 10 and 20. So in the future, in order to execute these instructions in a correct manner, we need to store these three values from the CPU somewhere. And that somewhere is nothing but the place, uh, nothing but the process control block of the of that particular process. So here I am going to store the value 39 because 39 is the address of the next instruction. 38 is already executed. So I am going to store the 39 and all the values of registers that is 10 and 20 also. And once the process control block is stored, uh, the values are stored back into the process control block, the state is changed to ready. Now it is, uh, it is, now OS can allocate this CPU to the process P2 here. The state of the process is changed to running and program counter is initialized to 90 here, which is the instruction address of the process P2. And that's how the execution of process P2 starts. Now it fetches the instruction, it executes it, executes it and it increments the program counter. It increments to 91, again it increments to 92. Instru here the instruction is load the value of x, x value is 30 now into the register R1. So here is the R1 loaded with the 30. Again next instruction is load the value 40 in register R2. Now it is going to perform the multiplication operation. Let's again assume that OS wants to schedule process P1. Now let's do the context switching one more time here. Now again, when process P2 will come back in future, it has to know what were its values of all the register, what was the value of program counter and that's why we have to again store this value of program counter and general purpose registers in the process control block of process 2. So here is a instruction number 94 and all the 30 and 40 register values are stored. And that's how the changed, uh, the state of the process is now changed to ready. Now again, OS is going to load these values into the CPU now. CPU is a hardware and these are just a memory uh, 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 values stored in the memory somewhere. Now these values will again be read by operating system and 39 will be again loaded into the program counter and these all the register values are again loaded as it is. Now we have set the program counter to 39 and that's how the process 1 is now resumed for execution here. Obviously the state of the process is changed to running also. And with this change, the context switching activity is completed and process P1 is resumed for execution in the same state in which it has left earlier. Let's talk about two points of uh, in the context switching. Context switching time, so whatever I have explained as of now, the time involved in doing the context switching is an override to the operating system, means it's just a waste of time for the OS. During this time, neither process 1's or process 2's instructions are executed. 
So let's take, uh, let me assume that context switching takes one millisecond. Then that one millisecond is purely wasted and user has not get, user means process ultimately has not get any output. So we call that time is an overhead. The context switching time is also known as dispatch latency. So that's how we reach to the end of the topic context switching. In the next session, we are going to learn about CPU scheduling algorithms starting with first come first serve. Thank you for attending this session.